Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. This morning we're gonna do a really quick warm up of a cow, so enjoy. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. Um, I live on a farm and this is the reference that I shot amongst many, many other reference shots, but I felt like this was kind of the best one that I could utilize uh, for this morning's demo. So you can see the view is a frontal view and this cow's obviously giving me some attitude, um, but I'm gonna push it a little bit further and kind of show you the process that I go through of translating um, a, a traditional uh, piece of um, reference such as this to a more cartoony characterized version. So you can see the reference that I'm pulling. Um, working today on just some simple white paper. Pretty simple. Um, what am I going to use for my drawing pencil? Now, as you see, I've got a whole collection of different types of writing utensils. And I'll typically land on something like this, which is a woodless colored pencil, wax-based. And I like these a lot, but the problem is, if whenever I go and decide I wanna go ahead and <laughs> ink it, um, the wax actually repels the ink. So then you're like, well, why don't you just use something like this? And this is typically something that I'll utilize um, whenever I do concept work or something like that, which is a, a call erase pencil. And you can see that I've really worn these down and the eraser is still intact because I don't erase. Um, and that's not something to brag on, honestly. I just, whenever I start getting into the rhythm and flow of the drawing, I, I just literally, you know, I make little corrections here and there. So. As we go back, you see my reference, what I'll do, I'm just gonna do the head, maybe a little bit of the body. Um, I'm not gonna get too out of control with it today. So I'll typically start with a circle and then I'll move on to maybe a rectangle, a skewed rectangle uh, going down towards the uh, mouth area. I can't really see the bottom part and you can see <laughs> he's got a little bit of stuff coming out from the side. And, you know, I had said something to the cow, and uh, I think he didn't like what I said. He or she, I can't tell from this particular angle. So, um, I'm just literally going to do really quick, really fast, really sloppy uh, piece of uh, artwork here. So, let's go ahead. Placement on the page. I don't typically like doing front views in the center of the page, but for this particular exercise, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. As you see, even in this rudimentary form, you know, I've got a really good uh, base to kind of continue on with the sketch. I've got, you know, the head, you know, and then I come in with the hair, and then you've got these large. Literally, I could just simplify uh, the drawing process to these really simple shapes. And you guys can see in a very quick order, you know, you've got that kind of a, a bean shape for the nose. The jaw as it come down. And you got the fur that comes out here, and then you got this other side that comes here because this cow is definitely a wide load. <laughs> very wide. I mean, you know, if you look, I mean, this thing is huge. Whenever I was, you know, I was pretty far away when I took this photo and you can see he's like, what are you doing in my territory? What's going on? You know, very uh, interested in seeing what I am. And, and these aren't noted as being um, predatory uh, animals. They're not predators, but you know, their eyes are slightly facing forward. So that's a consideration that I have to make whenever I do this particular character. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna have him like his eyebrows up on one side and it's kind of down on the other. <laughs> I 
Okay. This is the moment. I mean, these are the... Literally, this is kind of my bread and butter. This is what I like doing. Um, taking, you know, traditional animal drawings and making them into something fun. Right? Kind of got his eye comes around. I'm having that eyebrow come down. And he's got a little patch of hair right here. And honestly, I'm not really digging this right here. I've got an extension somewhere. I don't know what I did with my extension. I moved recently. Ah, here we go. I found it. My extension. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say I moved recently. And I, I can't find some of my drawing stuff. So this is a really great uh, extension uh, made by Derwet. I've got two of them. This is the silver one. The black one um, has a, a rubbery grip. But this is really good whenever it gets down to this particular stage. And then you go in and you screw on. And then suddenly, look, you have a, an extension to actually draw with. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this done here. I don't want to spend too much time. <clears throat> and waste your time here this morning. So we've got that eyebrow that comes up. We've got that muscle. And then the muscle down here is going to be lower. So, <clears throat> coming down here. And I'm, I've made his muzzle a little bit bigger. Here. There. Nose comes up like that. And remember, we're not getting into any of the details right now. Any of the details. We're just literally fleshing out some of the easier areas. And you notice I'll do one side and then I'll hop over. And sometimes I'll even draw kind of a, a construction lattice line to help me figure out the form and how things uh, are gonna place. The fur comes here and then that nose comes out here. Okay, we got that lower part here. Maybe I've got that kind of a piece of grass, right? And the other side can come up here and maybe he's got some grass coming out there. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go ahead and droop these down. Now I'm looking at the nostrils, and you can see he's... A lot of times it's the nuance that really you kind of have to pull from. So you can see these lines right here really go into this large ocular cavity. This large cavity right here being that muscle that kind of resides and allows that large eye. Beautiful. Cows are beautiful. Um, you know, with their, their beautiful big eyes. And then you have this hair patch that comes down and I've kind of latched onto that as part because it goes right under that brow line, right? It comes here. And again, I want that to be a little stylized. So as I move through, making little decisions. Okay. And again, I'm, I'm not being a slave to the reference. Now, it is the same frontal pose, but I'm not drawing the animal as I see it. I'm drawing it as I want it to be. So even though I'm using this as reference, goes here, I'm kind of pushing things a little bit. Like, obviously, the cow's not going to be able to have the ability to raise that, you know, that eyebrow up. Of course, I don't know. There's a, another cow, I, I, I believe it's the male, because all these are, I, I believe all these are, most of those are females. Um, and I call him Big Ed, because Big Ed is huge. I, I can't even tell, oh man, I gotta take a picture of Big Ed. And, you know, Big Ed's funny because he, he wants action. You know, he wants action, quite a bit. Action being, of course, intercourse with the other uh, cows and the ladies that are part of his um, his group. And, you know, whenever I was out there the other day, Big Ed's like, hey, you know, and he goes over to the, I don't know which one it was. And that, the one wasn't having anything to do with him. And you could tell he was kind of, you know, rejected. And I look at Big Ed and I go, yep. That's, uh, that's what happens, Big Ed. 
Because he went up to her and he's like, hey, how you doing? And she's like, and she kicked him. She kind of kicked him a little bit. That was fun. I'm like, yep, yeah, there you go, buddy. Okay, so we've established uh, a little bit of an attitude uh, for this particular little character. Let's have that eyebrow come up just a little bit further. That eye. And I can't really see... Go ahead and do this. Okay. And we'll have this one come over. Always referencing the other one when I'm doing the other side. And that eye shines like right there. So again, I need to go ahead and cover that in slightly. Okay. And it's so funny because if you look, it looks like she has kind of a hat on. So I can play off of that, right? <laughs> look at that. Her hair is sticking straight up. That's hilarious. So I'm not going to do that per se, but I am going to use it a little bit in my drawing. So then you... Okay, so now the ears. The ears are important, and how I've drawn them here, they're too small. So you can see how large they are. A lot of times we look at our reference, and we draw things too small, and we stop looking at the anatomy of, uh, of our reference image, and we end up making mistakes. So I've already seen that I've drawn this. I've drawn uh, a little bit too big. This image too big, so the ears are actually going to be wrong, unfortunately. Okay, so now the nose. Let's go ahead and get this. Comes down. Okay, again, referencing the top of that mouth. And I've got this little patch of fur that comes here, and then the hair. So I'm going to go ahead and round that out. I'm going to round that out. Then I'm going to come here, and I'm going to have that neck fur come down. Okay. Good. Or that nostril, that huge muzzle. I'm gonna go ahead and shade these in slightly, and I'm gonna go ahead and shade in the overall bottom part here of that muzzle. Okay. I'm starting to run thin here, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil really quick. My electric pencil sharpener has been giving me some grief. So typically, whenever it does that, I reset everything on it. But this morning, I'm just going to go ahead and I just did a little simple carving. So I can continue on with does videos. Okay, so now that ear, bigger, it's like bigger, comes here and then it goes in, right? Okay, here, in. The other one, we'll have a little bit down. It's going to be down slightly. Okay. Always referencing, now you see, always referencing like placement. It's, it's, it's a relationship um, process. So I'm like, I'm figuring out where this is in relationship to the overall evenness of the ears, then whenever I have this line come up, I'll have it come down and it goes in slightly and then it kind of juts right there behind where the eye is, okay? And there's some hair involved because this particular cow is hairy. 
I'm not gonna include the tag because those are kind of distracting in my opinion. So let's go ahead and do this. Again, I'll come back and I'll reference this to the other side of this in relationship with the eye. Okay, so I'll have some fur. Nope, that's wrong. Okay, here. Okay. So now what I'll start concentrating on is some of the more important areas that I think are important in the context of the drawing. Let's go ahead and see. Again, you know, I go back to my reference and I say, okay, where is the top of the back? The top of the back is going to be somewhere probably right here. And then it's going to come down because you've got that large arm muscle here. And then coming around, I'll continue that line. I'll do a draw through. And you can see it comes out of the other side of the eye. Okay. And then it comes out further. Okay. So now that I've established, again, that form, form being height, width, and depth. Remember that? Because the ear, right that hair comes around. I mean, literally, it's like that. So, a little trick for you guys, whenever you're not understanding where the light source is, okay, what you can do is you can actually squint your eyes, squint your eyes down to where you barely see the image or reference image that you're looking at, or if you're drawing in the wild, you look at it, um, again, with squinted eyes. The squinted eyes will basically beef up the contrast and you'll see the highlights and the shadows um, really distinctly. Because whenever you open your eyes, you're allowing more light in. Uh, but whenever you close your eyes, it's flattening, um, it's flattening the, uh, the plane. And you can see things much clearer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and as I draw these eyes... I'm trying to think, you know, what, so it comes out and around. Again, it comes out and around because it, because the eye itself is large. I mean, it's inside of the skull. So I'm gonna have some fur, some hair here. Okay, I'm running out of pencil again. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna come down here and I see the corners of the mouth are actually back further. So they're right around here. So I'm gonna draw that fur comes out and then I'm gonna have that comes out. Cause the corner of the mouth is actually right here. And then it goes into shadow. Okay, we we'll go ahead and do this. It's a little bit darker. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I was going to say, grab my Koh Noor um, woodless pencil. Actually, I might do that because I want to put some better shadows in here. This eye seems to be a little bit larger than this one, so I need to go ahead and, and bring this forward just slightly. Okay. Better, better. All right, so let's go and pull. Oh. I think it's rhodamine red. Rhodamine red. Rhodamine red. Where's that? Let me get all the way in. I might have used them. Oh no. Gonna pull down. 
So now, what I'll do is I'll just basically start, I'll squint my eyes and I'll start looking at the drawing in terms of, uh, you know, kind of like flat plane shapes. Kind of giving a little bit of value here and there. This is really cool. This part right here, this nose, this just beautiful, this animal is beautiful. Okay, good, good. Okay, let's go ahead and do the... Keeping things simple, keeping things easy, keeping things light, you know, not stressing about anything. And that's important. You don't want to stress and be like, oh, my drawing is terrible. This isn't ideal. You know, obviously it's got issues, but you know what? I'm having fun. Right? That's what's important. Having fun. I'm going to go and switch over to this. Uh, you can buy these little doodads. This little device at art stores. Uh, I believe Dick Blick sells them. Um, Hobby Lobby, which is where I got it, sells them. Because the Hobby Lobby is easy for me. Okay. So then, what I can do is maybe give it some glasses. Glasses. All right. And what's great about drawing like this is this will be part of a larger body of work that will be in my sketchbook. And at any point in time, I decide I want to go and kind of stroll through the sketch sketchbook. You know, this is what I would refer to as kind of a developmental sketch. It doesn't really have a meaning other than to help me develop that muscle memory. But in its entirety, it can be a reference image for a possible character later on down the line. And this, that's what's great about these little warm-up sketches, you know. Um, no matter what they are, they can suddenly take on a new life. You can give them a story. I tell you, I got to do something with Big Ed. Big Ed's hilarious, dude. There's a, uh, I don't know if it's a spring shed or what it is. It's a very old building. Um, and it's falling down. And we go driving up the the way because we live on a farm. And, and you know, it's in between two huge mountains. So we're like, here's the mountains right here. Here's the road coming in. And here's the house on a hill. <laughs> it's a farm. So we're coming in and the spring shed's over here on the right-hand side. And... 
Big Ed is inside the broken down spring shed and he's and his head peeks out and he's like, Hey, what are you doing? You know, he's like, he hears you coming and he wants to know who you are, what's going on, if you're here to take his ladies, you know. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys today. Just a simple warm up drawing. I am doing um, tutorials right now for XP Pen, and they will be available on their website uh, using their product uh, and also, you know, developing new videos all the time for you guys here on my channel. And once uh, the videos get posted up on XP Pen, I should be able to share them um, via my channel. So hopefully uh, that'll be a good thing. And I'll be doing a uh, live stream uh, using uh, one of their products. So hopefully um, we'll get back on schedule soon. Um, but this is literally just uh, to show you guys my process that I utilize. And even this, as I go through, I would start pushing and pulling. Maybe I would take my eraser. I've got my trusty black rubber eraser. And I would start you know, erasing some of these lines and coming back, you know, <clears throat> coming back with a black line or something to kind of, again, define, um, and define the, uh, character a little bit better. I don't even know what you would call this one. I'd have to that hair patch come down a little bit. Having fun. That's what, you know, we really need to remember about this whole process. I know that as a professional, I'm responsible for a lot of things because money's involved whenever you do, you know, drawings and whatnot. But, you know, whenever I first got into this, I wanted to make sure that I, I still had fun. I still did things that were fun. And, you know, drawing every day, drawing something simple, having fun, that's really what, you know, I'm all about. So that's it, guys. Like and subscribe, please click that notification bell. Like and subscribe, share, do whatever you need to do. You know, we're almost at 8,000 subscribers, which, you know, in the context of the entire YouTube universe is not a lot, but I worked hard for every one of those subscribers, and I appreciate every one of you guys that comes and subscribes to my channel. Watch the videos. Definitely, there's a lot of content here. I got stuff for Procreate, I got stuff for Photoshop, I got stuff for Clip Studio Paint, Rebel, I've got traditional drawing, I've got painting, I've got watercolor, I've got tons of stuff that you guys can really pull from um, and uh, hopefully enrich your drawing experience and just be a better artist overall. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Bye.